the angel maker on Bruck Street, Hilda Nilsson. She is known as Sweden's most horrific female serial killer. She was arrested and charged with the murder of eight children. If you knew how she did it, it would shock you. Hilda Nilsson was born on 24 May 1876 in Helsingborg, Sweden. She got married to Gustaf at a young age and settled down in Helsingborg. Their financial life was fragile, and whenever they tried to get some money on their hands, they would encounter a massive setback. They were gradually drowning in colossal debt which affected their married life. Instead of finding a shortcut and running away, Hilda decided to find a job during the day when her husband was not at home. The rising debt was killing her, and she would spend days in unease thinking about how to get free of it. Finally, Hilda decided to take a job as a nanny in work during the day. She started taking care of young children, primarily babies. Most children belonged to single mothers who had to lead their kids so they could go to carry on with their jobs. Hilda would take care of these kids and make sure they were healthy and safe. In the 1800s, having a child outside of wedlock was considered a disgrace to the community. It was like sinning, and the local community would exile people. Families and friends would cut off ties with these individuals and kick them out of their houses, leading to spending days on the streets and experiencing poverty. In some cases, they were asked to leave the town so no one else would commit a sexual relationship apart from marriage. But the case was a bit different here. Mostly women were blamed and kicked out of the town for getting into sexual relationships. While men would roam around the town and sleep with several women at a time, no one would dare to accuse them. These men would later disgrace and humiliate the women with who they slept. Hilda hated to see that only women were being discredited and shunned for the crime. She decided to help these women by caring for their children born out of these sexual relationships or rapes. Hilda would charge these mothers a hefty fee, which was the beginning of helping her own family. She began to bring in a decent amount of money, but there were some issues that she didn't know how to deal with. Some mothers didn't want these babies, so they would pay her big money, leave their babies with her, and never return. These women wanted to start a proper life by getting married. This led to taking care of many babies at one time. It was getting harder for Hilda to take care of so many babies. All the money she earned from baby farming would spend on the babies left behind. She was once again getting vexed about the debt that she and her husband had to their names. The debt was so high that it would take them years to pay off their finances. After working hard and giving 100%, she was still unable to earn enough money. These qualms were getting on her nerves. She would often have headaches, anxiety, and lethargy. Hilda's concerns were now transforming into agony and rage. Her heart was loaded with hatred for the world as nothing seemed painless. She would often have sinister ideas while caring for the babies left behind. The children would cry and ask for their mothers, who never returned. She had to take these left-behind babies home. After spending the day taking care of babies as a baby farmer when she returned from work, the babies at home would demand love and care. Feeding them was getting harder, and she was desperate to escape this situation. Hilda took matters into her hands by claiming innocent lives. She planned to erase the lives of these kids who were unwanted by their mothers. She thought no mother would take the case to the law because these babies were illegal. Mothers would never spill a word because they would get kicked out of the town for unlawful sexual relationships. In those days, the police or government didn't have records of these children, and the mother handed these babies to Hilda behind the doors. The evil monster inside Hilda was awake now. She planned to kill the first baby. She took the baby to the bathroom, put him in the wash tub, then put a weighty object, a brick, to drown him and left. After a few hours, she returned to the bathroom. The baby was dead, and she was contented that she finally got rid of one of them. She picked up the body to dispose of. Instead of burying him, she decided to burn him to get rid of his body. She would light the fire inside the house and put the baby in it. She was fearless now and would kill the baby right away when the mother left him. She would judge by the body language of every mother that she won't be coming back. In her way, she was helping these children to get rid of their suffering. Even the mothers would pay Hilda for her service and tip her a tremendous amount, but she wouldn't wait for an hour and quickly kill the child. Most of these children were infants who weren't even able to protest. When she did not burn them, she dug graves and buried them. She would commit all the killings when her husband wasn't at home, but the strangest part here was these babies lived in her house. 
How could no one learn where these babies were going? People would often leave these babies to baby farmers in those days and never return. These babies would die because baby farmers couldn't provide them with basic food and care. The police wouldn't hold anyone liable for these children because the baby farmers were doing the best they could. This gave Hilda a free hand, and she kept killing as many babies as she wanted. One day a woman named Blenda Henriksen approached Hilda and asked if she could visit with her child. Hilda got nervous, but she knew that Blenda would never involve the police because the baby was born out of an inappropriate relationship. Hilda came up with several reasons, but Blenda wanted to see her child safe and secure. Both got into an argument, and this was when Blenda got suspicious. Blenda left and went straight to the police station and asked the officers to help her find the baby. The police went to Hilda's home, and just after a few hours, they knew what was going on in the house. The police soon found ample incriminating evidence of the murders. Hilda had been claiming the lives of countless children and raking in a ton of cash in exchange for her terrible misdeeds. Hilda was arrested that day and was taken to a holding cell in the nearest city. She was facing at least eight counts of murder which meant she would receive the death penalty. Hilda had an innocent face, but evil had taken over. She wasn't ready to face the court because she thought her life was equally miserable. She looked calm in the cell, but she planned to get away with all the crimes. Hilda was held in cell 5 at the Lake Scorna Citadel, a building crafted in the 1500s but used as a makeshift jail. Hilda gave up on the ghost of her own accord. She got up on her feet, drew her linen scarf out, climbed up the chair, and hanged herself. After a while, when the security came to take her to court, they found her dead. It is believed that she killed over 17 children, but was convicted for eight children. It was not the end of Hilda Nielsen. After her death, visitors in the landscape in a citadel said that they feel as though the spirit of Hilda haunts the building. They believe cell 5 has a heavy dark presence looming over the room. Once a young prostitute was arrested and locked in cell 5. When they checked the woman one morning, she had wholly derailed and was in a state of horror. Blood was splattered all over the floor and resembled the devil's eye. She said the blood had poured out of a Bible placed inside the cell. The Bible belonged to Hilda. After a while, dogs were taken into the building. The dogs begin to bark, run around in panic, and refuse to enter cell 5. After decades, Hilda is still present in cell 5. That's a wrap for today. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up, share, and subscribe to the channel to see our latest content.